Welcome back to Terpy Eyes, I'm Ryan, and this video is sponsored by Atrium Lighting. They've provided the discount code, Terpy Eyes, that can be used on any of their products on their website that they offer. We left off at day 30 of flower in the previous episode of this grow series. If this is your first video of the series, then I've linked all the episodes in the video description below, so you can start from the beginning if you want. The Atrium Lighting Hydra 3200 LED Grow Light is doing a great job at providing the five plants with all the necessary light they need as they work their way through the flower stage. With the trichome development really frosting up all of the plants, the second half of flower stage is going to look great now that they are also starting to put on a lot more weight. We're jumping to day 35 of flower as I forgot to record the time lapse for the previous week's growth. With the plants on cruise control at this point, all we are doing at this point is keeping an eye out for any pollen sacs that might start to form, just in case so we don't pollinate the plants and end up with seeds come harvest time. Only other thing is filling up the water reservoir for our automated irrigation system. For this week, we're just following along with the Lotus Nutrients feeding chart and pHing the mix to 6.2. It's a little risky moving later into flower without any supports on the branches, but decided to see what happens and finish off this run without any supports as these plants are a little smaller than what I normally grow. As we pass day 40 of flower, it would have been a good idea to do another defoliation of the plants at this point, but much lighter than the defoliation we did earlier in flower. By doing it a second time, it would allow for much more light to the lower sections of the plant, which would increase the bud development down there to help avoid any popcorn nugs come harvest time. We are now 10 days away from harvest, so we can start to notice each of the plants start to fade. It's nice to see how each of the strains changes colors as they finish themselves off. Don't forget, if you're enjoying this video so far, or found it at all helpful, to hit that like button. It really goes a long way in supporting the channel and helping us grow. We have reached harvest day, and I have to say that amnesia lemon plants really bulked up over the last couple weeks. Although they are lacking in the trichome development overall, it looks like a decent strain overall. Since we are turning all these plants into ice water hash, probably not the best choice to wash with in the future. With that being said, be sure to come back to the channel tomorrow to see not only this harvest, but the previous two harvests of the Mac Nana and Stomp Berries get turned into ice water hash and then also pressed into live rosin. The last five days of flower before harvest, we give the plant straight water to flush out any nutrients or salts that might have built up in both the plant and the growing medium. The Mac Nana, Stomp Berries, and Butterfingers all really surprised me with how they turned out, considering the Mac Nana and Stomp Berries were both the weakest seedlings out of 16 seeds of each of those strains, since we brought those over from other grow tents we had going on. As for the Butterfingers plant, it was far from a healthy clone when we got started in this tent, which ended up being a gorgeous plant now that we have reached harvest with it. Now that we have had a good look at each of the plants and how they have turned out, we can get to harvesting them. Like I mentioned previously, we're going to be turning them into ice water hash. So we're going to be harvesting them fresh frozen style, which means we are cutting the buds straight off the plant and putting them into the freezer. For that process, we're using the grow bags and using their fresh frozen bags. We 
starting out by harvesting the amnesia lemon plants and using the small size fresh frozen grove bags. All that needs to be done before putting the buds into the bags is removing the large fan leaves. We don't want to cut any of the leaf tips off at this point as it opens up the plant tissue, which will affect our quality of the ice water hash later on. Removing the buds off the plant stems is pretty straightforward. I like to use curved tip scissors, which helps a lot with getting into tight spaces and getting close cut to the bud. It's very important for this process to be completed as fast as possible, so the fresh buds can get straight into the freezer fast, which helps with the freshness. If you're new to the channel, I upload videos every week covering indoor and outdoor grows, solventless extractions, products, and equipment, while showing how to work through different situations that may happen along the way. So if that's what you're into, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out when I post new content. The amnesia lemon strain looks like a good yielder if we were to keep it as flower. It just doesn't tick all the boxes for me as a keeper. We did have only two plants to select from, so it's not really a fair move to base this strain solely off this grow. It also doesn't have enough trichomes on either of the plants that we have to even think about it being a good ice water hash strain. Be sure to check out my Patreon page where I post a exclusive weekly video showing current grows going on in a different style format of content for grows long before they make it onto YouTube in this style format. With the amnesia lemon plants out of the way, we can move on to harvesting the macnana strain. I messed up here by bringing out the other harvest to add this plant into it. Should have just harvested this plant into its own bag to avoid the other harvest slightly getting warm while this single plant gets harvested. At the time I thought it wouldn't get affected since it wasn't very long, but we can see from the time lapse that they did get a little soft while getting the one plant done. Same situation with the stomp berries plant unfortunately, but we live and we learn along the way and that mistake won't happen again. I'm currently getting all my strains tested for hops lane and viride, so hopefully those tests come back negative so we can really see just how this Butterfinger strain can do as a monocrop in the nightlight room in the near future. We are currently running a monocrop of the stomp berry strain in the nine light room so be sure to follow me on instagram if you want to look at that before we finish up the clone to harvest video of that grow before it makes it onto youtube I know there's going to be comments below asking for harvest numbers, but in my perspective, the wet untrimmed weight really isn't important. So be sure to watch the next video on the channel where we turn these plants into fire live rosin after first turning them into ice water hash and using a stay fresh freeze dryer in the process. Until next time, happy growing everyone and remember to get out there and make it happen.